Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome. Welcome. Happy Wednesday and welcome to all of our ACC students, our faculty, our staff, and even our community partners. Uh, so excited to uh, share this event with you today because um, I'm going to be able to be a participant and learn just like you. Uh, and also because this is a, 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 a topic that is kind of near and dear to my heart. Uh, I think when we talk about truth, racial healing and transformation, often the focus is on like stereotypes and racism and biases and microaggressions. Uh, but part of the conversation is also how do we impact systems? Um, how do we uh, impact narrative change? And I think one of those systems ha has to be um, uh, the structural racism that of often occurs in, in some of our structures. So whether it's um, housing or, or, or education or medical care or employment, uh, these are conversations that we also need to have. These are conversations that um, uh, that need to be had because there, there's room for improvement, there's room for growth, and that, that falls on corporate leaders, but it also falls on us as community members and, and as aspiring leaders who are going to be the change we, we want to see and need to see in some of these corporations. Uh, for myself, being a born and raised in Flint, Michigan, um, when, when, when my elders, when folks talk to me about you know, career aspiration, college, uh, often what came up was nursing or, or, or education um, or, uh, or engineering. Um, and, and now I, I'm thriving in a field that I didn't even know was an option. Uh, so I'm excited to hear from this panel because I think they bring a unique perspective uh, in a field that uh, we are often underrepresented in. Uh, so I'm going to not, I'm not gonna talk for too long, but I, I'm, I'm excited and I hope you are to hear from them this is a important topic and because we are a institution of higher education so part of our responsibility is making sure students are connected to their purpose uh figuring out what their gifts and talents are and how they can align them with their purpose uh and, and you know helping to you know provide opportunities to see uh folks that look like you look like us in these different fields uh and i'm also excited because um, we have an amazing panel um, one of the panelists is, is near and dear to my heart uh so i I will pass it to our, our, our amazing, uh, beautiful moderator to kind of get us going. Jessica. Good morning, uh, students. Good morning, panelists. Good morning, Dr. Williams. We are excited. We've been looking forward um, to hosting this event for a while, um, just because there is a lot of talk right now, right, about diversity, equity, and inclusion in certain spaces. One of the biggest spaces where there is a deficit from a minority and a female standpoint is technology. And so we wanted to have this event, not just to talk just about technical roles, but working in technology, because there's a lot of other um, things that you can do whenever you work in the technology field. And uh, with myself uh, being a junior college graduate, um, I went to um, Atlanta Metropolitan Junior College um, in Atlanta back in 2000. I think I graduated in 02, somewhere around that way. And it was a stepping stone to uh, what led me to where I am to this day. So we don't want you all to feel like through this conversation that you cannot relate because there is a lot of relatable experiences that everyone will share. Um, I noticed that Carmen also has an associate's degree and so she started where many of you are uh, right now. And so the sky is the limit. So uh, just a little bit about myself. I have worked in supply chain and logistics for over 20 years. Um, from a technical standpoint, I have done project management, program management. I've done continuous improvement. Um, with working for organizations like Home Depot, uh, Coca-Cola, True Value, Applied Materials is who moved me to Austin and that semiconductor, as well as currently working at Apple. Um, and so I'm going to uh, turn it over to the panelists uh, shortly, but I want to give you just a little bit of history about each one of them. And we are going to start out with Hattie Sesma. Um, Patty is a charismatic person. I've enjoyed engaging with Patty uh, over the last month before uh, we got this program started. Just really a, a light. She just has a light and a very positive energy. She's very passionate um, about impacting not just the Latin American community, but the African American community as well. And she's doing great work with the Austin Urban Technology Movement. 
Uh, Patty started out in Mexico. Uh, in Mexico, uh, she was born in Monterey. She uh, received her bachelor's degree in information and communication sciences at the University of Monterey. Um, Patty has spent a lot of her career uh, advocating for Latino communities. She's worked with the Common uh, Communications Organization Univision. Um, she was uh, responsible for developing resourceful and high traffic uh, driven content uh, for uh, seven websites uh, throughout the Texas market that, that targeted the Spanish um, community. Uh, Patty is also very passionate about engaging um, Latino owned uh, small businesses. Um, she's helped them to establish an online presence uh, as well, empowering and impacting her community is what she's very passionate about. And currently, um, Patty works, like I said, she works with the Austin Urban Technology Movement. She is the Vice President of Marketing and Communications. And um, they have basically a lot of opportunities around job placement, career development, uh, networking opportunities, and so forth. And we'll get around to talking about that a little later. Thank you, Patty, for joining us. Thank you for the invitation. All right, next we have Carmen Clark. So we're excited to have Carmen here because Carmen comes from a HR perspective. Uh, Carmen works in semiconductor. She has been in HR for over 15 years. Um, very ambitious young lady. She uh, is a mentor. She advises um, her team. She does talent analytics, um, very proactive. Uh, and in a personal development and she loves change initiatives within um, her scope and just her, her network of people. Um, Karen, like myself, started with an associate's degree. Um, her degree was in liberal arts and she turned uh, next to getting a bachelor's degree in business admin. And she has her MBA uh, with a focus in HR management and um, another accolade. She was, uh, she was an honor a student whenever she graduated from Baker College. Thank you for joining us, Carmen. Thank uh, you so next, much. Oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was just saying thank you for the invitation. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, next we have Crystal uh, I'm McBuyers. She is uh, a 20 plus year established, uh, experienced, <laughs> compassionate. I've worked with Crystal before at Applied Materials, so I'm partial. But just an all around good person. Crystal um, is a part of an organization called Lead Within Applied Materials. And the whole objective of Lead is to empower um, the African American community. And they partner with other ERGs as well within the organization and the community to enhance um, you know, their, their team's uh, expertise, um, to also just make sure that they are impacting the community in a positive way. They do a lot of nonprofit work as well um, in Lead. Um, Crystal, uh, she's passionate about her family. She works with um, programs to improve the lives of girls and children of color. Um, like I said, working at Applied, Crystal and I have partnered um, with the city of Austin. We've done other community uh, service related events um, that were around the youth and empowering uh, young people. Uh, Crystal holds a bachelor's um, in management and a minor in engineering technology. Uh, she has an MBA as well from the University of Phoenix. And um, she'll go a little bit more into about what it is that she does and how she got to where she is um, at Applied Materials. And um, last but not least, we, were, we are joined with, uh, by Issa White. Issa is the program director at the Austin Urban Technology Movement and um, Issa is with us to basically talk about how the how Autumn can assist uh, junior college students and young professionals with uh, mentorship programs, career development, as well as uh, first time job opportunities. So she'll kind of round everything out. And uh, at the end, uh, everyone will share their contact information because I believe networking is super important. So definitely connect with everyone on uh, the social platforms that they provide to you guys. All right, so we are ready to go. <laughs> so we're gonna start our Q&A segment here, one moment. 
So the first question, we're going to start with uh, Patty Sesma. Can you give us a brief summary of what led you down your current career path, including your educational journey? Yes, ma'am. Happy to. First of all, thank you, everyone. And, and thank you for inviting me. So nice to meet you all. I just want to say that I'm excited to be here and share a little bit of my story. Uh, my start in the career of um, technology and communications has to do a lot with the entertainment industry. Um, I, uh, my mom and my dad used to work at a TV station, and I basically grew up feeling very comfortable around, um, you know, celebrities and, and just feeling comfortable about cam in front of cameras and things like that. So I, at some point in my life, I thought that I was um, or discovered at some point in my life, a passion for public speaking uh, within me. So I decided to pursue that. And yes, I tried to go and become a TV host. But when I got there, I realized that I was actually more excited to be part of the creative minds that actually were on the back end of the TV shows that I was actually uh, rooting to be part of. And I decided to shift my passion or my first goal in life to become someone uh, that was more like uh, well-known for public speaking rather than to become someone that was more like a creative mind producer. And I do wanna bring this as a highlight because I want you guys to keep this in mind because later we're gonna touch on um, um, how, how, much, how important it is to be passionate about the things that move you. Um, the last place that had to do with the entertainment industry that I worked at, just like Jessica mentioned, was Univision. But Univision opened a huge window of opportunity to me to be very connected and in close contact with the community. And I discovered that as a new passion for me. I didn't know that was something that I was not only passionate, but crazy about. So I decided to go um, and work for nonprofits. And the next nonprofit I worked at actually gave me another big opportunity to learn about social media and running ad campaigns to promote our the organization that I was working at at the time. And I was very successful. I was actually, uh, because I am so curious and I wanna learn a lot of things, I was able to actually create a campaign that reached the 1 million followers within eight months. I couldn't even believe it. So I thought I had discovered a new way of public speaking only through digital channels. So, this all boils down to the place where I am at today. Today, I am the person responsible of running the marketing and communications department at Austin Urban Technology Movement, which just, less, uh, just like Jessica mentioned, it is an organization that is 100% focused on helping uh, people, regardless of their age, to build a career in tech. We provide everything they need, and it's just going to... Um, elaborate more on this, but we do provide everything they need, starting with the enthusiasm. We encourage people, we provide uh, training, certificates, mentorship, orientation, all the resources they need in order for them to pursue a career. And not only that, but be successful and, and be able to have a bright future. Awesome, thank you so much, uh, Patty. I'm sure we'll get some great questions. Uh that'll come about later on in the discussion. Uh, so. Next, we would like to ask the same question to uh, Carmen. Let's get a little brief summary about your career path and your educational journey and what led you to where you are right now. Thank you. Sure, well, thanks again for having me and um, to everyone on the call, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, my career journey is a little bit different. So as Jessica mentioned, I've been in HR for about 15 plus years. However, I've started in insurance mostly. So I work for companies like Allstate and AAA. Um, I've always been an HR business partner, but then I also supported sales. So I have a little bit of twist to my career journey. So being in that um, career field for a number of years, the insurance industry took a turn. I'm actually born and raised in Detroit. And in Michigan, um, the unlimited PIP laws changed during the pandemic, right? So if you can imagine, you have this pandemic, and then you have a huge insurance law that changes, which leads to layoffs, which leads to a lot of change. So I literally just took a risk, and I turned on my LinkedIn and said, you know what, I need a change, right? I've been doing insurance for so long. Let me, you know, do something different. And so just by chance, you know, in my search during the pandemic, taking a risk, I was introduced to AMD, right? So technology, I'm like, 
never done this before, but I needed a change, needed something new. And it was in Texas. So I've never lived out of state. So it's like, okay, should I take this risk? How can I make an impact? I'm so comfortable with insurance, right? And I have to learn an entirely new industry. But lo and behold, doing my background and my research on AMD, I found the company to be great. The interview process was awesome. And um, they were able to relocate me to Texas. So I now reside in Austin, Texas. Um, and I've been there for a little over a year. I started at AMD in October. Um, and again, just took a risk during a pandemic, trusting my insights, using my network, asking a ton of questions. Now I'm an HR business partner in sales in the technology industry, which is semiconductor as well. So that's pretty much how my career journey um, landed. And that's where I am today. Thank you, Carmen. And we have Crystal. Um, I'm McBuyers next. Thank you, everyone. Good to meet you. And similar to the other uh, ladies that just talked, you know, everybody takes a little, little different journey. Uh, so for me, you know, I started out um, at a technology college. I'm, I grew up in upstate New York and um, I'll get to how I landed in Texas. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so for me, you know, coming out of high school, we said, okay, I'm going to go. I'm, I like the STEM careers. I'm just going to go and take that path. And, um, you know, started out at the college, you know, went my first three years and everything was going well. Um, and then I started doing some internships. You know, and some, I'm, I'm sure like several students uh, that are on the call, you know, it's, it's very difficult. And uh, in the New York area, it's extremely expensive. So one of the things that I was able to do was to pivot one of my internships into a full-time position. And at that time, you know, rising student loans and all of those other things uh, just kept compounding. So I took the opportunity to take some time, take some time off work full time. And then the company I was working for was in the medical device field. Uh, so, and they actually, once you got hired full time, they had tuition reimbursement. So I did that other path of taking classes at night, working during the day, you know, and then, you know, started my family. So I did that journey for about five years and was able to, you know, finally finish. Um, Along that path, um, my husband and I, we moved, we got an offer. Uh, he got an offer to move to a company in Austin. So we moved to Texas. For me, I was like, okay, do I work in the same field that I've just worked in or do I jump into something new? But I was like, okay. I said, I was working in the manufacturing environment. Um, I know the process improvement world. I was like, I can just, I can probably find something I'm sure in Austin. And um, the company I work for right now, Applied Materials, they were growing a lot in the early 2000s. So that's when I started in, in 2000 with the company. Uh, and I work, yeah, I've worked in several different areas within that company. Right now, I'm operations uh, manager in our demand planning um, and uh, uh, procurement or organization. So we, we make sure the systems, like companies like AMD, the, the products that they purchase, we actually build those products. So, um, so for me, I'm working with those sales teams and the business management partners to make sure that our our products get to get to the customer. So, but for you know, for me, the one of the things that I always share with students when I talk to them is, you know, you have to think about what journey works for you, and there's different different ways to get to that path on what you what you want to get to, and Especially now, uh, some of the things that I tell my uh, my young adult uh, children, that path may change a few different times. So I've had five different career path changes throughout the 20 plus years. So and I've learned a lot from each one of those. So I just encourage you to, you know, really experience that. If you get a chance to do internships or co-ops, take those opportunities because when you walk in there day one, you've got some of that you've learned some things on that journey, even if it's a short three month stint, whatever it may be, you know, if you see those opportunities, take those uh, because it will, it will definitely benefit you when you get into the workplace. I know it worked very well for me uh, walking in and I was able to leverage that each time I went to a different company, but it started with 
in college doing those internships and the co-ops to get an entry level and try to understand what the, how the companies function. And it, it's really helped me along the way. So that's my journey. Thank you so much. Thank you, Crystal. Uh, lots of good information here today. So we'll go on to the next question uh, quickly. Uh, can you all talk about a major challenge you had to come uh, to overcome along your professional journey? We'll start with Patty Sesma. Yes, ma'am. So for starters, I actually try to switch the word challenge into challenging opportunities, because to me, that's the mindset that I actually use to tackle the challenge. So I would encourage you to start looking at it like that, because just like Crystal mentioned, every single thing that we explore as a new path is always going to have a grow, an outcome of growth and it's going to benefit us. So yes, let's look at it as a challenging opportunity. And to me, if I have to talk about one specifically, because thank God there have been so many, uh, but if I have to talk about one or um, address one, I would say that, um, having to learn social media like by myself and having to kind of like get up to speed with the world that was happened, like the world around social media, how it was being utilized for businesses so quickly. And, you know, everything that happened behind uh, social ad campaigns, campaigns, um, Google, in, um, including Google was something new for me. When I major from my um, from information and communication sciences, social media wasn't even in the picture. So, the fact that I had to uh, start um, kind of like exploring the um, the field of digital marketing and learning that myself, I was very lucky to be part of organizations and companies that actually allowed me to have direct access with people from Facebook, from Pinterest, from um, Google, etc., to train me. I took a lot of advantage of that. So I was able to uh, implement those learnings into um, something else into my career as I was growing. So I would say that was a challenging opportunity that again has br brought me down to where I am at right now, making the best uh, out of um, my learnings and making sure, for example, that this organization that I'm uh, representing today is actually um, well represented excuse the redundance um, in social channels and making sure that the message that is sent out is effective, is efficient. So um, yeah, that's, I would say that would, that would be the, the, the major challenging opportunity I had to face. And thank you, Patty. I really enjoyed how you uh, worded that. I know when I worked at Applied Materials, one of the things that they would say is that it's an opportunity. So instead of saying issue, one of the things that I took away from that experience was that it's an opportunity for you to learn. So thank you for elaborating on that. Uh, next, we will go on to Carmen. Yeah, so early on in my career, this is what stands out for me. I was in an emerging leadership program, like an ELP. So I was selected for this and we had large like tasks and assignments and projects we had to take on. One of the peers in our group left the job unexpectedly. And so we were assigned specific tasks for different COEs or centers of expertise that we supported. So I was laser focused on what I needed to do, but lo and behold, my manager asked me to take over that person's project. I had no idea. I didn't know exactly what, you know, roadmap she was using, things of that nature. But you know what? I took it as an opportunity to Patty's point to learn that side of the business network with those leaders, build those relationships. And actually we ended up completing a project one time and I was able to encourage our team to keep pushing through. This was huge because we had to present this project to the CEO of Allstate, right? And so you're nervous and you're like, how am I gonna do this? But we ended up finishing one time. And because of that, I was awarded a spotlight because again, it was something that I didn't know. But instead of shying away from it, it may be uncomfortable, but like I tell a lot of the people that I mentor, if you're comfortable, then you're not doing something right, okay? You have to lean into your discomfort. You have to learn something new. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room, right? So you have to look at it as an opportunity to be stretched. Don't be afraid of stretch assignments. Don't be afraid of, like Crystal mentioned, even if it's a three-month internship program, anything new and different that will stretch you and allow you to learn new opportunities, I advise you to jump into that. So 
again, learned a lot from it and also received a spotlight of recognition for it. And I was able to, you know, contribute to the business. Thank you so much, Carmen. I appreciate that. Um, that's one of the key points I believe in uh, strongly about is not shying away, but when an opportunity presents itself that may be a challenge, it is, you, you have to step up to the plate um, and communicate. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to give it a try, you know, and make sure that you leverage those relationships and those networks to, uh, you know, achieve your goals. So that's, that's awesome that you achieved a spotlight for it and that you were courageous and willing to take the chance. Uh, Crystal, I know you have plenty. <laughs> yeah, plenty of challenges <laughs> that face every day. But um, one of the things that comes to mind um, early on in my career um, <clears throat> at the, you know, one of the companies that I worked at early on doing an internship. And I got to get a little more proficient on uh, running the department. So I got, I got the opportunity to actually become a lead and then become a supervisor of that particular department. <clears throat> so you can imagine, you know, I'm a junior in college, just coming into this role. And most of the folks on the team that I had to manage were a lot older than me, you know, some are about the same age, but many of them were a lot older than me. So it was the first time really that I had to try to understand how do you manage and help others manage their career. Um, and it was, you know, not always easy, but one of the things that I leveraged, I had really good mentors. And you know, there was one mentor that I had, um, uh, at that time, and he was, you know, this was in New York, um, and that person is actually working at a company now in Austin, and I still converse with uh, with him occasionally and, and get good tips, but, you know, again, he went through the military, so he, he gave me some mentorship um, advice on how to, how to handle a large group, um, how to address the needs of several people, you know, and make sure everyone has their place and how to, to run and run the operation and uh, really contribute to the goals that the team needed to make. We can't do it by ourselves, right? So several of your students going into new careers, you're, you're gonna find yourself in those types of roles or you may already be in those types of roles working someplace. And so you have to learn how do you manage um, other employees, uh, but leverage, leverage mentors because those folks have, They've gone that path in several uh, instances and they can help you through some of those challenges. So that's one of the things that I do and I still do it today. Even time, every, each time I go into a new role, I find a mentor that can help me um, that has some expertise. Maybe it's a peer mentor or someone that's been in that role, but that can help me uh, understand and navigate through that environment. So that's that's one of the challenges that I continue to face and, and try to make sure each time I get that, that's the approach. And as Carmen mentioned, if you if it's easy to you, then it's probably not as much of a challenge and, and may not be as rewarding as you want it to be, right? So we need to stretch ourselves and look for those opportunities. Thank you so much, Crystal. Um, I agree with her 100%. One of the things that I uh, am passionate about is not just career development coaching, but professional development coaching. You know, it goes, it should go on and on and on, and it should start when, whenever you are young. Now that we're in a technological age, there's a lot of opportunity for, for you all to connect with us and others um, on LinkedIn. I would suggest if you don't have a profile, get a profile. Uh, build your network uh, with people um, that you're doing what you want to do, or even if you are inquisitive about it, establish a relationship with those people. A lot of professionals are willing to help if you ask for the help. Okay, and the last question, what is one piece of advice, even though you all have been giving advice throughout the whole uh, conversation, uh, what is one piece of advice uh, you would provide on seeking the right career path? We'll start with Patty. Excuse me. Thank you, Jessica. Before I answer your question, I want to add something to what you were just, uh, just saying about networking. 
just so you know, guys, Facebook is actually um, a platform where you do a lot of that. And there are Facebook groups, which actually are filtered by topics of interest. So you can actually go and run a search and find um, groups that actually uh, relate to your um, interests and just make sure you join them. You're not going to believe it, but they're very, very helpful. So and uh, moving to your, onto your question, um, a piece of advice that I would like to share based on my personal experience. So before I provide just some or share some of my from my heart, something that could be useful for you guys, I want to say that yesterday I read that only 8% of the population actually achieved their goals in life that are related to what do you want to become when you grow old? And you would think, oh my God, Patty, don't say that. That means that I'm never going to be able to get to that point. I'm not going to achieve my goal. Yes, and that's the best news you can have. If you are one of the persons that actually achieve a goal that you had when you were little and you, and you just dedicated yourself in, um, to work on that and, and didn't explore anything else, didn't um, stretch, then you, you should be worried. So I really hope that you guys have a lot of goals and you actually shift those and you'll be able to evolve on that on those dreams that you have. The piece of advice I can give you is make sure you follow or you not follow but identify your passion. You need to know within yourself some there must be something that actually makes you jump out of bed when you know you're going to do that. When you're able to identify that, make that your first goal but not your last. Make sure that you achieve that and make it a step forward to something else. Because once you get into the path of finding exactly what you want to do, is that you're going to be able to stretch and find something else and be evolving and growing and learning. And that is what life is all about. Just make yourself excited every day and just feel happy and excited to do things that move you. And um, the other thing I really want to share, I encourage you really, really strongly that you make yourself, you set yourself a goal of learning one new course every year, at least one every year once you graduate, once you are off from school, keep learning, make sure that you keep yourself up to date, that is going to allow you to remain relevant, and that is going to open a lot of doors uh, for you. And it's going to put you a lot on top of your competitors because, yes, even though we have an abundance mindset, there are competitors out there. So we need to make sure that we are remain uh, relevant and we keep learning and we um, just like I did with social media, I kept up to date and look at where I am right now. So, yes, that is what I would share. <laughs> Thank you so much. And your reply ties into just your whole journey, you know, and in, in your journey through communications and technology and so forth. And, and, and it eludes, you know, that you're very passionate about that, and that you follow the right path. And so I hope everyone picks up on that, um, that energy and just that story. Uh, next, Carmen, please. Yeah, so I think for me, you have to determine what your North Star is, right? What is it that you're passionate about? What are your goals? You know, this ties into everything we're talking about, right? And then what's the roadmap for you to get there? You have to be open to change, right? Sometimes in life, we create this path, even as women, right? We have these goals. I want to do this by this, right? But be open to sometimes you might go left or right. It's not always straight, right? And then also with careers, sometimes it's a ladder move, meaning it's going up. And then there's a lattice, meaning don't be afraid to zigzag through that career, right? Because you can network and learn different things going in a zigzag, more of a lattice versus just, hey, I need to climb the ranks and go straight up. And then also take risks. I know as women, sometimes we look at a job and we say, you know what? I don't meet 100% of the qualifications, not going to apply. But if you didn't know, 40% of the men that apply for roles, they, they have about 60% of the qualifications and they still take the risk. They still go for that job. So try to go for it no matter what. Keep in mind, no one is perfect. So as you're looking at your career and you're looking at new job opportunities, apply for the role, right? Think about your transferable skills. Think about what you can bring to the table, right? Try to think outside the box as you build your career. And then also too, lastly, network, network, network. I can't say this enough. Jessica mentioned it before, LinkedIn profiles. If you don't have one, 
I, I challenge you to get one by the end of January, okay? And it's very simple. Even if you don't have a career, you can put your education, your background. And to Patty's point, there's a lot of awesome groups. You can join on LinkedIn. And if you follow specific companies, follow any of our companies that are represented here today. You can find out a lot about job opportunities, internships, things of that nature. But networking will be your best friend to help with that roadmap to get to your North Star. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Um, I think that is solid advice. You know, people don't realize that networking can be applied to from a professional standpoint. You know, everything mm -hmm. is focused on friendships, relationships that are personal. But, um, you know, we those will be great. But from a career path standpoint, we want to start now with with building those relationships, taking those chances, um, getting sponsorships and mentors just to, to grow and, ex and, and not just grow, but also to um, highlight different areas. I know uh, at Applied Materials and several companies, they offer internships where you move through different departments so that you can learn about each department and then you can make a decision. Um, one of the things that I would do when I was doing career development coaching and mentoring, um, I would tell my students to go and take, there are free assessments online that help you to develop or get an understanding about who you really are. Uh, just some quick Q&As and it'll tell you a synopsis of career paths that may be great for you based upon uh, those, those questions. So it's out there, definitely reach for it, um, look for it online. Um, there's, there's tons of resources to also kind of help you narrow some things down if the scope is really broad. And uh, on to Crystal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you took part of mine, <laughs> part of that. But one of the things that I would say, you know, be that continu continuous learner. So even after you get out of school, no matter where you go, look for those opportunities to continue to learn. Uh, as Jessica mentioned, coming out of school or going, just starting out, doing that career assessment, it's, it's so valuable. And they're not very long, right? They're, they're quick, but you, you start to understand what your skills, abilities are, and where your strengths are, and where you need to, where you may have some challenges. So if you go into a role, and maybe that role requires you to have a lot of knowledge on computer skills, technology, different things. You want to understand where are you at currently when you go into that. So you understand what your delta is. How do, what do you need to do to maybe get up to speed uh, and in some of those areas going into that. So doing that self-assessment and being self-aware going into your job search is definitely a benefit. And not sure if the college already does that for students. I know that was one of the things that um, I know my college did. Um, the career counselor, they would just send it out and say, take this assessment and then you could, they'd give you the results and then you can take it from there. And if I, and I look back on that, some of the things that were in there, you know, my strengths, I, I see that I, I identified them even 20 years ago. Some of those things are still there. And then some things I've actually developed more. But it helped me as I was trying to figure out what type of role was good for me, you know. And it's and it's going to change over time, but it gives you that um, kind of uh, yeah, correct, Patty. <laughs> it gives you that um, starting point, right? You have to understand where you are, and it can help you to understand where you want to get to. But knowing yourself and what you're capable of, um, that's helping. But being that continuous learner because you don't want to stay at that level, then there's, there's tons of ways to help you. Other, um, another um, resource on LinkedIn are the LinkedIn learning classes. So those are available and most of those are very are free. You can go in if you look at a different area that you maybe you wanna improve your communication skills, presentation skills, whatever that area is that you want to, to develop more in, there's courses for that and they're, they're very quick, but it gives you something that you can refer back to and get a good understanding of, oh, okay, maybe I can try that. 
So, but yeah, being that continuous learner and doing those self-assessments is, is something that I help my employees with and anyone that I mentor. Um, and I think that's a, that's a good advice that's worked for me. Thank you so much. Uh, great piggyback off of what I said. Um, you know, we leverage technology for so many things. We definitely need to leverage it, especially young professionals um, and young students um, as a way to broaden our network, broaden our knowledge. And the classes on LinkedIn are actually free. A lot of them are free. I take them myself. My mom uh, says that I am a professional student. So I am always in school, taking a class, trying to get certified in something um, just because, you know, things change and you want to make sure that you're fresh and you're on top of, of what's going on within your industry. So uh, lastly, before we go into q and I wanted to introduce you all to Issa White. She can tell us a little bit about her and about Autumn and the mentorship opportunities that Autumn um, offers. Definitely. Thanks for having me. And I'm so glad to be on a panel with all these lovely ladies and all the insight y'all are sharing. I'm typing some notes for myself. <laughs> so yeah, definitely a professional student as well. But yeah, actually, so all the information and, and, and insight that these ladies have shared, um, I definitely want to add an action item to that. So they've already shared, get your LinkedIn on, out there, get your Facebook groups going, get your um, conversations going on with those, you know, outside of your social bubble. Um, but also join Autumn and become an Autumnite because that way you can go ahead and tap into these resources. I just put the link in the chat. Um, so you can definitely go and, you know, check out our website. But if you're wanting, if you're really serious about getting into the tech space in tech industry, and to that point, that doesn't always mean a technical role. That could mean a job at a tech, at a tech company or a technical role at a non-technical company. It's all tech industry related. So go ahead and, and, and check out our websites and look at those opportunities that will then push you forward to one of your, your dream jobs or career um, in a space that you may may or may not have been aware about before. But I want to touch on the point about the mentorship. And I'm glad all of you shared your um, your tips and maybe your experiences as a mentor or a mentee, because um, you want to have mentors for different things. You want to have as many mentors as you can. I mean, you're going to have that. There's phases. There's some mentors that are there for a season. You know, you might be there because you're trying to attain a certain you know role. So you need someone that's already in that role or something that's very related, but you want to have different mentors for different reasons. Um, the reason being is not every mentor is going to have expertise in everything. No, no, not, a business, not every, that one person is not going to know everything that you need to cover, but you can also get some different perspectives. Um, and maybe if you focus on, you know, those different perspectives that they might have expertise in, or if you focus on what it is you're trying to gain from that relationship, you can definitely, you know, hone in and have a stronger relationship with that mentor. So the types that we offer make it very direct for you at an autumn is having an occupational mentor and then having a career coach. Very different in terms of the approach. Um, occupational is focused on just that person's expertise. So if that person is a data analyst, right, and you're wanting to be a data analyst or going to data engineering or anything regarding data, you're going to want to talk to somebody who's been in that role or at least have gone through um, the, the the challenges or have an experience of being in that role and know that that industry or that um, occupation in and out. Um, the difference is between the career coach is that career coach is there to help you with that of your, your personal career and what that experience means. So if you're needing to really hone in on some of those interpersonal skills, kind of, you know, reaching out and networking and finding out, okay, what kind of conversation should I be having with people when I'm reaching out? You know, why would somebody want to talk to me anyway? What kind of things should I be sharing when I'm putting my name out there and I'm, you know, building my, they call it your brand. You know, what, what, what skill sets should I be focusing on to really showcase myself? That's a career coach and they can really, um, they can really tap into that side because they may, may not be, you know, someone who has a subject matter, a subject matter expert in the career that you're wanting to pursue. But regardless, that's what you have your occupational mentor for. On this side of career coach, this person is helping you identify, you know, what's good about you and how can that affect your career. So you definitely want to tap into different mentors for different reasons. Um, I don't know if you want to touch on having an advocate or somebody who can, you know, further that conversation, but then you have someone who's, let's say if it's a hiring manager and they're trying to decide on who's really good for a position, someone who can advocate for you and actually say, no, Issa is a really good person. Let's choose her. That might be outside of your mentor. The mentor is there to kind of coach you to get to that position, but having someone to advocate for you is definitely like another level, but I'll definitely start with the mentors, build those relationships first, and you can possibly identify who those advocates are to make those decisions for you. So definitely connect with us. Um, 
in terms of you know moving into the career space, like Patty said, finding out what your passion is. It may or may not be that fireman or that you know CEO that you wanted to be when you were younger. You identify you know what you want to be when you grow up because we're all still growing up, right? Um, <laughs> you definitely want to find out what makes you what gets you going because that could uh, translate into many different things and many different roles that you may or may not know that exist. So you definitely want to tap into to uh, what your your, your skill sets are definitely that's a major thing. Um, you can always work on what you need to improve on, but people will look at your skill set and what you're great at first, and then they figure out, okay, well then you know we can supplement that with somebody else's you know skills. So definitely want to tap into those ideas. Um, our website has all the information you need to get started. Um, joining, you know, being an automite. Um, you definitely want to tap into some of the courses and find out, you know, what area that you want to be, um, what core you want to focus on, what area of tech you want to focus on. We have the information there. And then that, um, moving forward in terms of, you know, connecting with mentors and connecting with our events that we um, have something just similar to like this, to connecting with other professionals in the tech space, having opportunities to connect and, you know, talk to them. Hopefully when we get back in person one-on-one, but also at a more interactive level. And then having the opportunity to then move forward and connect with them on LinkedIn, because that's what all of our partners, all of our uh, presenters, all the companies, anybody we work with are expecting to hear from our automites. So you definitely want to take advantage of all the opportunities that we share with you guys. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate everyone dropping in their LinkedIn profiles um, as well as the um, Autumn uh, website so that we can get everyone connected. Uh, Dr. Williams is going to take the reins from here. Uh, thank you. To, thank you, Jessica. Thank you to all of our panelists. Um, I was taking a few notes as well. Um, some great information. Uh, we, next, we're going to kind of transition to uh, giving our audience an opportunity to um, ask our, our, um, our esteemed panelists some questions. Uh, so I, I, also, I encourage you, you know, at, being a speaker, it's always good when you're in this platform to see some faces. So I know uh, for the panelists, we kept our cameras off. But if you are able and willing, we'd love to see some of you turn your cameras on. Um, if you have a question, you can uh, verbally ask your question by unmuting your mic. Um, or if you're more comfortable, you can absolutely drop that in the chat. Uh, but let's let's get a few cameras on if we can. Um, let's let's show them that ACC folks are real. We are here. So I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds. I'm gonna, gonna ask our panelists some questions. So I'm gonna give you 30 30 seconds to think on it. If you have a question, you can drop it in the chat. If you want to unmute your mic, feel free to do so as well. I will get us started. My first question is um, uh, for uh, whoever would like to respond. Um, have you ever had a workplace experience that you felt was either related to you being uh, a woman or a person of color that you had to work through? And how did you kind of um, prevail in that? I'm sorry. Well, can, can you okay, repeat the question, um, Ms. Uh, Dr. Williams? I'm so sorry, I couldn't get the question. Oh, broke up. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever had a, um, a workplace experience that you, did you feel was um, uh, particular to you because you were either a person of color or a woman? How did you work through that? Um, I can speak to being the moderator. I can jump in. I'll jump in real quickly. Um, I am a uh, African-American woman in a male-dominated industry. I started in supply chain, in logistics and transportation, probably in 2000. Um, when I moved here to Austin, uh, coming to the semiconductor uh, industry, which is the um, industry that makes uh, tools and so forth um, to, to create the computer chips and so forth, they go in, our, in all of our technology. I was the uh, first inventory control manager hired at Applied Materials, and um, I was a woman, and I had to be in rooms where there were male-dominant rooms and where there were people that were senior and executive levels. Uh, professionals that have been there in the company well over 20 years, some 30 years, and um, I just didn't have a voice. Um, I had great ideas. I wasn't being heard. And um, I, too, had a mentor um, at Applied Materials. And one of the things that I was told by that mentor was that I had to get sponsorship. So where we talked about earlier and having someone to be an advocate for you, I basically had to build um, a team of women. Um, one was uh, LGBTQT. The other one was just a woman that was in uh, the tech field um, at Applied. 
but they basically were my advocates. So they would come into meetings, they were respected and they would say, hey, she has great ideas. You guys need to hear what she has to say. And they also had me to meet with some of the uh, men, uh, lunchtime meetings and so forth, so that they could understand my background and uh, learn a little bit more about why I am so passionate about, you know, implementing some of the changes that we had to make um, to better conserve our inventory and so forth. And so it took for those advocates, those sponsors, uh, for me to become respected. Uh, for my work to be valued, for me to have a ear in the room. And then once I was established, when I wasn't in the room, I was, I was called like, hey, are you going to be in this meeting? You know, or, um, you know, let's, let's reach out to Jessica and see what, um, you know, if there's a way we can partner with her to try to resolve some of the inventory issues that we were having. And so I say that to say, not just professionally, personally, sometimes we all need someone to boost us up, make us feel good, someone that can go before us that has a a higher authority um, that has the respect in a particular space that can uh, advocate for us and, and kind of command um, the respect uh, that we need uh, as, as a woman and especially in male, male dominated spaces. I can answer to that as well. And it's very similar to your story, Jessica. Um, I used to work at a company, tech, um, um, tech focused company as well, where I felt all the time I was a minority of a minority of a minority, being a woman, Hispanic, and not millennial. And that was a big deal back then. And no, Jessica, I didn't have the luck that you have of them kind of like taking the time to discover who was I and all the things that I could bring to the organization. That never happened to me until I met uh, Michael Ward Jr. He's actually the person and Clifford Dukes. They are actually the persons who gave me a voice. And I am so happy I went through all that hardship because now I am able to represent people and to make sure that I represent and I have a voice for the communities to be able to get into the tech industry and be respected and be able to be heard and, and achieve their goals and their dreams just as they deserve to do so. So um, I think it always happens. There are uh, uh, companies that doesn't, at least in my own experience, there are companies that they don't really have a... Um, groups or interest in creating diversity and inclusion, but Autumn is change, Autumn HQ is changing that right now. Thank you for that, Jessica and Patty. We have another question in the chat. Can you remember one of your most joyful moments on the job? What happened and what made that moment so great? I think for me, I like to develop others. I led a team of um, 10 individuals at Allstate and a lot of leaders, you know, hold on to their top talent. And I wasn't that type of leader. Um, I actually developed someone on my team who ended up surpassing some other sales leaders in the organization. And she was a woman of color. So I think for me, it was joyful because I can see someone that looks like me that can succeed, like Jessica mentioned, in a male dominated um, field and be one of the top sales leaders in the Midwest, in Michigan, Ohio, Ohio, and Indiana. So through mentoring, through leadership, and just as a leader, being an influential leader and not holding our top talent close, like, okay, I, I don't want to lose this person, just developing them and giving them their wings to grow. I think that that's one of of many moments that brought me joy. It's like, wow, you know, just to see them develop and grow and go on to be something great and to represent, you know, women of color in a male dominated field. So that's one of the moments I would say um, was great for me when I was in leadership. Now I'll add something to that also. Um, one of the things that I've over the years um, at my current company had applied that has really brought me joy. We, back in um, 2000, 2001, we started on a journey with our employee resource groups. And it, it gave me the opportunity to get to meet folks that I probably would have never interacted with across the company. I didn't even know, because so, you just get in your own little bubble, <laughs> your own work environment, and you don't get to meet other folks outside of that. And it's, it's really evolved over the years and we do a diversity and inclusion uh, conference every year within the company and just seeing how the company has embraced that 
is is really helped me and it's and it's a great recruiting tool as folks come in and we talk to new college grads or anyone else joining the company that's one of the things we talk to them about even in their virtual environment we're still able to do it and try to connect with employees um, around the world we that was one of the i think uh dr williams you mentioned about you know, being a curse and a blessing, but it's it's given us that platform so that we can reach more people across all of our companies and get them engaged. And people are starting to open up and it, and have great conversations. So, and it's I mean, it just it just makes me feel so much better because I can come to work and have people's voices heard and and have a safe space to have those conversations. And people are starting to, you know, everyone doesn't open up immediately, but people are starting to, and they're starting to really feel that, that they can have that safe space and open up and, and branch off and, um, and support each other. Thank you so much, uh, Carmen and Crystal. Uh, our next question is, uh, that's my question actually, but it's, I often have conversations with students about, uh, yes, there's a necessity to have money to pay bills, um, but also if you're going to wake up to do every, something every day, you need to be happy in doing it. Uh, can you talk about um, just your thoughts around pursuing a field, a career because it pays the most versus uh, pursuing what you, what you love? Uh, any thoughts on that? I guess that's a tough one. <laughs> um, I mean, I wanted to be a TV host, Dr. Williams, and I just thought like in my house, like in my upbringing, it was a lot about you need to get an education to be able to, um, you know, have a, an established life. And I think right now the, the story is very different because thanks to the pandemic, again, trying to see opportunity in challenging situations, we, a lot of us brought out our entrepreneurial side of our personalities. So when I think that when people come across that or they hit the roadblock of, hey, I really wanna become a musician or a painter or whatever. And I do know that that is not a career that may um, actually, that could be as profitable as, uh, uh, as profitable as I should or would have uh, expected, um, there's always a way to do the things that you love and support yourself or, or support those dreams through doing something that you are also, um, that could be used to learn and reinforce your knowledge for what you are doing to love. Like what I'm trying to say is sometimes you have a passion. I am a painter, I love singing. I, and I am a self-taught artist. Nobody taught me how to paint. And that is something that I do because I love it. Uh, but a lot of things that I've been doing around had involved me into the area of graphic design, which has actually contributed to my art skills in a way. So I think it's about having a mindset of anything I do is going to help me grow in the areas that I really want to uh, become strong or solid and grow, right? Um, that's what I would, I would, uh, that's my two cents. <laughs> and I'll, I'll add to that, you know, it's, it's, it's a reality, right? Sometimes you do have to get a, a position to pay the bills, right? But that's not where you have to stay. Um, you know, and I've been able to see some folks within my current company and previous company, they volunteered to help on different events, you know, they came in and they may be working in quality or engineering, but they really enjoyed marketing, you know, some of the other areas, but by volunteering and working on some other activities within the company, they got noticed and they were able to make those connections, you know, but, you know, coming in, they, yeah, they had to get a job to pay the bills, right? So, but that doesn't mean that's where you have to stay. Because as you go into a company, you want to look around and ask questions and see what other opportunities are available that may align with some of your passions. Because yeah, we, we all would like to do that whenever we can. And in some cases, if you can't, but you can find opportunities where you can um, showcase that and, and help the company from that standpoint. You may not be able to get there right now, but use that as a stepping stone to launch yourself into some of those positions 
uh, by getting getting noticed, but jumping in and being engaged is a great way to do that. And I'll, awesome. I'll, I'll piggyback off of that real quick and just say, um, I worked at Home Depot probably for a total of eight years. I moved from different roles within one month, three months, sometimes a year or so. And it wasn't because I was seeking those opportunities. It was because of the relationships that I built with other people. Um, and they said, okay, well, you've mastered this. What do you want to do next? Or you appear to have interest in this. And it was you know, it was building that network, building those relationships and having those conversations and someone seeing that I was doing well where I was at. And I think a lot of times, you know, we get so focused on a trajectory of where we want to be that we don't pay attention to where we are. So buckling down in school, you know, getting the right grades, building the relationships through the internships, through the mentorship program, those are all uh, necessary tools to eventually get you, um, you know, to where you want to be, but it's just a part of your trajectory and your direction, your path. I do want to add um, something that probably is um, not as popular, but it's, it's definitely okay. In terms of some of those questions, I'm just reading over the chats and some of the comments. Thanks everybody for commenting in there and adding more questions. Mm -hmm. If you're in spaces that you don't feel valued and you're constantly finding, it's also okay to leave. It's okay to leave and find another organization that will not only value what you have to say and what you have to contribute, but you'll find yourself actually performing a better rate than trying to find a spot just to stand out and just to be noticed. So it's definitely okay to leave. Um, in terms of organizations, in terms of the, the group of people, in terms of the company that you're in, um, just whatever setting it is that you don't feel, you know, I guess valued is the best word to kind of sum it all up. You can definitely find another spot that will definitely, you know, because there's always, there's roles everywhere. There's jobs, especially in the tech industry. There's so many jobs out there. Um, you'll be very surprised, you know, to find another company, um, whether it's a competitor, partner, whoever, but you can definitely jump ship and, and do something else and spend your time better at it. Thank you for that, Issa. If I can just add something really oh, to what Issa said. Um, Renee, bravo, bravo. That is exactly what it means to be the movement. Speaking for yourself, raising the voice and, and being an upstander is exactly what the movement is. And that's what like Austin Urban Technology Movement is doing that as well. So you guys need to join the movement and be the, become actually the movement. And I strongly encourage you to sign up for our newsletter because you're going to find a lot of information related to what we're talking about right now, especially for you, Renee. Thank you. We have another question in the chat. Yeah, thank you all for those responses. We have another question in the chat. Where is Austin going with this huge tech wave? It is the huge tech wave. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm being funny, but you'd be a lot of companies are moving here because it's the most economical position location wise to be just right smack in the middle of the United States. A lot of people realize that now a lot of there's a lot more space here. Um, Austin, I don't know how they're dealing with the uh, infrastructure right now, but <laughs> it is a lot more space in Texas in general. So moving to Austin, but you also can um, take advantage of remote roles too. Remote roles are becoming a lot more common. Companies are recognizing that having the ability to work from home, especially being you know a, a female in the tech industry. I don't have any kids per se, but you know those who do are finding it more convenient to take care of their children and be at home instead of forcing them to drive into the office every day and um, confining to that that typical you know setup so um definitely taking advantage of these remote roles that open that opens more companies up to you for opportunities um and then um in terms of Austin specific again there's a there's a a energy that's in Austin that um because it's a it's a it compared to the other cities compared to Dallas I'm in Dallas physically compared to Houston it's a newer city so there's still a lot of newer energy and newer changes that are happening. I mean, it's happening all over the United States, but Austin's a little bit different. So that's my comment on, on Austin. It's going on the way to space. <laughs> it is. Literally, literally with Tesla, yeah, in the SpaceX program, absolutely. And I would say, I'll reply also to uh, Safiro. Um, Safiro, if there are, you know, if there's interest, once again, go on to LinkedIn. Tesla has a great program where they look for uh, minority women 
uh, to work uh, for uh, the automotive industry. Um, I've had the opportunity to just sit in on some of those conversations. There are just the wave of things that are going on right now in the Austin area is that they're wanting um, women of color in uh, tech roles. These HR professionals, these recruiters are looking for you. Um, even from an internship standpoint, you are, um, you're a unicorn right now if there's interest and, and they're looking for a unicorn. And so um, on your LinkedIn profile, you can also go into the job section um, and you can put that you're interested in internships or you're interested in entry level roles within the Austin area, just so that recruiters and people that make decisions on hiring um, and internship opportunities can see uh, from a back end standpoint that you are open. Mm -hmm. That's very true, Jessica. I received two to three um, job inquiries or calls or emails a week, just being in Austin. You know, the Michigan um, job force is not that great. I mean, it's pretty steady, but with tech, you got Tesla, you got Samsung that's moving there. You know, you have so many opportunities, Google, Microsoft, Visa, you know, it's just growing at a rampant rate. And like Jessica mentioned, we're unicorns. You know, they look for us. I have so many inquiries on my LinkedIn profile. This company viewed you, this recruiter viewed you, right? So when they see your background and history and, you know, what you've accomplished, be it as a, as a student level or at a professional level, they want you. So they will reach out, but it's important to keep all of your information updated so that you can grasp those opportunities. But it's, it's very, uh, it's growing very fast. You know, one thing I will add, I, I think um, because of the colleges like ACC and the other colleges that are have students available in the Austin area, you know, companies like mine, you know, we do programs targeted to try to attract them um, so that folks will think, well, how do I actually get into some of these companies? So if you see programs um, uh, publicized or you see information about attending some of those type of information sessions, go to them. You know, it might be something that will interest you. Um, you know, we had to do that because the, the market is so competitive. It's, it is so hard to get people that um, you can hire at, you know, at the, at the company. So we had to start reaching in and reaching out to a lot of the different universities and, and um, the community colleges to say, we've got entry-level programs. You don't have to have any training. <laughs> you know, if you want to get into the tech field, you, you, you can get in. These are the ways that you get into those positions. And as you're in there, you can move into other areas. Maybe you do have an interest in engineering or finance or marketing, whatever it may be. We have those programs where we can get folks in the door, get them into the entry level programs, and then they can see where they would want to go within the company. So if you, if you see that for any of the students, if you see those info sessions, for whatever company it is, I encourage you to just to go and, and listen. It might be something that will interest you uh, because companies are really trying to keep the talent here as much as we can and trying to, to get folks to, uh, to be interested. Uh, and there's a, there's a lot of great opportunities. So, so hopefully you will uh, take advantage of that. Thank you for that, Crystal. We have about two minutes and we have two questions left. So I want to see if we can get those in. Ms. Loretta, I know you've been waiting for a while. Hi, thank you. This has been a great um, exchange of information. I just wanted to ask, and it's kind of a combination of a couple of them that have been asked. What, what was your aha moment in terms of knowing that this is the thing I want to do? And, and how did you deal with overcoming some obstacles that ultimately got you to where you want it to be. Because uh, I noticed in the, in the chat, there are a lot of folks that have questions about um, how do I know and how do I get there from working at a food industry? I mean, you know, just if you can kind of help to, to provide some information, that'd be great. Thanks so much. And elaborate um, a little bit. I moved to Atlanta. I don't know. I had to have been maybe 23, 22 years old. I took two weeks worth of clothes and a couple some resumes. My mom was in HR. She was in recruiting, and she was like, you know, if anybody can do it, you can do it. And so I had no degree, and 
had no direction, had been in college a couple of years for physical therapy. <laughs> so mm -hmm. totally occupational therapy, totally different industry, right? Decided that I quit my job on a Wednesday. My parents moved me out of my apartment on a Saturday and I moved to Atlanta in, two, in, in May of 2000. But I knew that I needed to do something different. And my mom's biggest thing was your job is to find a job. And so for those first two weeks, I signed up with all the uh, different types of staffing agencies, not just banking where, where my experience was, but I remained open. And the reason being is because they looked at not what I did, but they looked at what I could do based upon what I did, mm -hmm. right? And so my first job was at UPS Logistics Group in Atlanta through a staffing agency doing accounting and uh, for transportation. And that turned into planning loads. And then that turned into, we got new software in and I picked it up so fast with Jessica, we're gonna send you to UPS's headquarters to train them on this new software. And so it just was a spiral from there that, okay, wow, I, this, is, you know, this is where I need to be. But I had to remain flexible um, I just, I didn't let anyone shoot me down. You know, I applied for all kinds of roles from accounting to manufacturing to engineering. I was all over the place because I figured something is going to bite if you bait enough hooks, right? Or from Mississippi. So that's the yeah. southern analogy. That's but good. something will bite eventually if you throw out enough, um, you know, hooks. And so you just can't get defeated by one, you know, one no, right? Because all it takes is one yes. Yeah. I will add to that, that I really wish for everyone that there's not only one aha moment, but two like millions of them throughout your life. Mm -hmm. Because like I was, we were talking at the beginning and Crystal actually mentioned that as well. Um, it's a matter of evolving in the things that you love and finding, when, when it hits, it hits and you know it. It's like when you fall in love the first time and you know it's love, same way. You fall in love with a career, you fall in love with a, with a I don't know, a hobby, something that actually speaks for you and, and, and you identify with. And it's easy for you to, to, to carry on. So, um, but I really wish that you have a lot of those moments throughout your life. Yeah. Another way of looking at, too, looking at it too, I had a moment realizing that I was doing something I really didn't like doing. And it took me to the opposite direction that I realized I, I know how to do this and I get it and whatever you do it, but I really don't like doing it. And I'm literally dragging myself into work every day in order to do this. And when you get to that point, you, you have to switch, <laughs> whether if it's quitting and no plan or if it's, you know, just finding something else to do in between. Um, but, you know, in my, you know, one of my past roles, I really did. I knew how to do the job but I found so much more excitement in doing like the ERG work. So employees resource group work and doing the stuff that's more communal related, doing this stuff, doing anything that's taking a company's money and putting it towards some kind of efforts in the community. And I realized you can get paid to do that. So <laughs> finding that, you know, I, I took more time away from my desk doing other things. And it was like, okay, this is the issue. I got to do something to switch over because I clearly, I, I found it out maybe probably the not unpopular way. I probably found, found out the unpopular way, but that was the thing that found, that uh, helped me identify what it is that I want that I should be doing. I think Nina had her hand up. I'm sorry. Yes, thank you so much. I was going to call on Nina, please. I'm so sorry. Uh, do we have time, Dr. Williams? I just we'll, had uh, we we will make time. We will make time. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. What a wonderful conversation. My name is Nina Almasi. I'm the Dean of Health Sciences at ACC. And uh, I was wondering if you had any suggestions, ideas on how we as program administrators can better outreach to uh, women of color in, um, in, you know, for, for example, as a faculty teaching online or in our health sciences, we have highly technical radiology tech program, sonography program. So not always, not only we're looking for faculty, but how can we have a more focused outreach and connection to the, the experts, women of color in those industries, in those 
uh, programs to recruit them for our faculty mm -hmm. positions. We do it through HR and we we are, you know, we're getting there, but what else can, can we do on our end to better connect? I have an answer for that. Um, I would say two things. The first one is you have to meet them where they are, right? Um, that is what uh, effective communication is all about, is knowing where they are actually um, spending most of their time. That's as a uh, person in charge of marketing and communications, my job is to make sure that I meet the people where they are. Some of them are on TikTok, some of them are on LinkedIn, et cetera, but the conversations there are adapted to each audience. So I would recommend that. And the second one is to contact us. Isa may elaborate more on that, but we can actually help you with those needs. Right, Isa? <laughs> And even starting off with volunteering, if they want to volunteer time to kind of figure out how does that work into their schedule, if they want to keep their current day job and then start tapping into maybe providing, like we have facilitators, for example, that, because um, we're not all experts, subject matter experts in all the areas of tech, but we have facilitators who they still have their day job, but they also are able to spend time, okay, they can do office hours, we can work in workshops, they want to do like a, a consistent workshop of, you know, of a topic that's related to, you know, the area of expertise, or however we can work out what that time looks like for them, so they can still contribute that part of their career, or that part of their insight to our learners, um, to our automites. And so you can tap into that idea, um, and that gives them the flexibility to like, figure out how that works into their schedule, if there's something they want to actually do instead, um, and that it's a win-win situation in terms of, you know, utilizing their time a little better. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so we are over our time and folks are still here. That means it was a really rich discussion. So I just want to thank, um, first and foremost, our panelists. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, uh, Issa. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Uh, I'm missing someone. Miss Jessica. Miss Je oh, I, I shouldn't. Yes, thank you, Jessica. I feel like I missed someone else there. Everyone's good? Yes, yes. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to uh, be here for us to share your wisdom. I know when I, I wish I would have had more kind of opportunities to have conversations like this when I was earlier in my career, because it definitely took me longer than it. I felt like it took me longer than it should have to figure it out. Uh, but I thank you for just 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 blessing us with your your experiences, your perspectives, your wisdom. Uh, thank you for offering up your LinkedIn information so uh, folks here, whether you are a student or, or or a seasoned professional. There were so many jewels here. I learned so much. So definitely feel free to reach out to them. Uh, thank you to uh, our ACC team that supported this event. So um, Balan and Jay Brooks, um, our, our IT guys that are help kind of behind the scenes. Safiro, our amazing TRHT uh, center admin. Um, and thank you, thank you, faculty, staff. I see some of you in here. Thank you, students. Uh, thank you all for making this event a success. Um, there's a survey link that Safiro dropped in the chat. Please, please, please give us a feedback. We're always looking to uh, make sure we're, we are providing the best and impactful program that we can for our community. And lastly, we uh, this is Truth, Racial Healing, and Transformation Week, so we have events all week. We have another event at three o'clock. We are launching a uh, Will Smith book, book Club. So essentially, you get a, a free copy of Will's new book, and you get to engage with faculty, staff, community, community folks from the Austin community. And we're also going to be dialing into the international uh, kind of book, uh, book club experience and Will Smith will be on there sometimes. So if you're interested in that, um, please, please drop by the uh, TRHT webpage and check out the events and uh, come come, uh, come hop on the three o'clock session. And beyond that, just, just uh, have an amazing day. Uh, um, I think we've got some great information. So hopefully there's some action items that we all have here uh, that mm -hmm. we're going to, to work on to kind of make sure that we are uh, pursuing what makes us happy, but all, we're also using our gifts and our talents. Um, I thank you all. And thank you. Have a great day. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Have a good day. Nice Bye. 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 Great panel. Thank you to our interpreter team as well. They're always yes. thank, you. Yeah. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you.